Question 1. A student used the following method to determine the percentage by mass of the painkiller aspirin. C9H8O4. In some tablets, step 1. Grind 5 tablets into a powder. Step 2. Use a weighing board, something like this, a plastic container, uh, to accurately weigh by different approximately 0.4 gram of the powder tablets into the pear-shaped flask containing anti-bumping granules. After that, add 25 cm cube of aqueous 1 mole per dm cube sodium hydroxide to the pear-shaped flask forming the mixture 8. So once we add the sodium hydroxide, so uh, the hydrolysis will happen. And uh, step 4, we need to reflux the mixture for 20 minutes. Later, need to, we need to draw the reflux setup. Okay, we discuss later. Uh, this is the equation for the hydrolysis. So when aspirin reacts with the sodium hydroxide, undergo hydrolysis, it will form two salts. Uh, basically, it's here. The bond break is here and it will form uh, the two uh, compound. So this one will form this salt and this part will form another one. Right? After that, step five. Uh, once the uh, mixture A okay, undergo the reflux for 20 minutes, allow the mixture A to cool and after that, we fill the this mixture A into a small pickle, something like this. So we just pour the A right into the this uh, uh, funnel. Of course, the funnel uh, with the filter paper. So uh, this is a simple filtration uh, that we can do in the lab. So we just uh, filter the mixture A and the filtrate now we label as the uh, solution B. After that, we add 30 cm cube of the alkaline aqueous iodine to the solution B and uh, let it stand for one hour and the precipitate C will form. After that, step 7. Filter the resulting mixture under reduced pressure. Wash the residue with a small volume of cold distilled water. Uh, for this step, uh, we are going to use a, a slightly different uh, funnel. We use a bunchnell funnel. And uh, we will put the filter paper on this funnel. And of course, uh, the flask will connect to a pump. So the suction pump. So because it's under reduced pressure, with the suction pump, the filtration can happen faster. We can get the solid residue C faster. Okay, means the solid will uh, on the filter paper after the filtration, and we need to wash with the cold distilled water. Okay, after that, okay, allow the solid C to dry, and weigh the solid C and record its mass for the calculations later. Alkaline aqueous iodine is uh, irritating to skin and eyes. Okay, part A. Identify an appropriate precaution other than eye protection, cannot use goggle, and a lab coat that the student should take when using this alkaline aqueous iodine. So the, the best uh, precaution that the student can do now is uh, to wear the chemically resistant glove. Try not to say gloves only. Eh? must put chemically resistant gloves. Part B. Describe how the student should carry out step 2. Include the results table with appropriate headings for the students to fill in. Headings. After that, okay, this one is uh, step 2. Huh? Step 2. So we need to use a weighing board and the powder. And uh, of course, uh, we need to uh, pour the powder into the pear-shaped flask. So means we need to get two mass reading. Okay. Add 
approximately 0.4 powder tablets into the weighing boat and measure the mass of the weighing boat and the powder tablet. So this is the first mass that we need to measure. After adding powder to the flask, then we measure the mass of the weighing boat and residue. Because after the pouring, some powder will on the this uh, uh, weighing boat. So we use the first one minus second one. We will get the mass of the powder tablets that transfer in the flask. Part C. Completes figure 1.1 to show how the step 4 is carried out. Step 4 is a reflux. Eh? Uh, you need to draw the, uh, the diagram and label. Okay, of course, uh, in this diagram, you only need to add the condenser. So the condenser need to direct connect to this uh, pear shaped flask. And you need to draw this tube this inner tube so the inner tube is for the condensation the outer tube here uh, this part and this part is for the cooling so you need to draw uh, water in and water out water in is from the bottom water out is uh, from top therefore the water will fill up the whole condenser and it will cool the condenser when we heat the mixture the gas will form, means the mixture will boil, gas will go up and because this part is cold by the water, so the hot gas will undergo condensation and drop back, form liquids and drop back. So the reflux can undergo for a long time because uh, the gas will not escape. So in this uh, experiment is about 20 minutes. So you need to draw this part, uh, the condenser. Part D1. The student used the measuring cylinder to measure the volume of alkaline aqueous iodine in step 6. Suggest why this is suitable piece of apparatus to use. There are two reasons. The first one uh, is alkaline aqueous iodine is in excess because it's 30 cm cube. Uh, second, uh, try to look at this uh, the, the volume. So it's uh, stated 30 cm cube. It's not 30.00. If 30.00, then we should use pure. Because it's only 30 cm cube, so uh, it's good enough for us to use the measuring cylinder. Okay, of course, second is uh, because it's 30 cm cube, so uh, it's uh, in excess okay, compared to this uh, solution B. Part 2. Suggest why the student uh, let the mixture to stand for the for one hour in the step 6. This is very easy. Uh, for one hour, it's just to make sure the whole reaction complete means the, uh, the solid C uh, fully formed uh, from this uh, reaction. Part 3. Explain why the residue is washed uh, by the, the distilled water in the step 7. Again, um, let's get back to this uh, the step 7. Step 7 is using the Bunchner filter. Of course, you no need to know the name of Bunchner filter. It's okay. Uh, so why we need to wash the residue now? Okay, let's say now the solid on the filter paper, we need to wash with some distilled water uh, because we want to wash out some impurities like sodium hydroxide and uh, the, this salt, right? Uh, those uh, compounds that can easily soluble in the water. Part 4. Explain why hot distilled water is not used in the step 7. Uh, just now in the step is a cold distilled water. Why are we not using hot? Uh, because if we use hot distilled water, the residue means the solid on the filter paper, it might dissolve more. Cold water or cold distilled water, it will uh, reduce the solubility. 
that's the reason. Huh? The residue is less soluble in cold water, which uh, uh, is minimize the amount of residue dissolves. So means we will get the uh, more residues okay, after the washing. Part E, the equation for the reaction between the aspirant, okay, this one, and the sodium hydroxide um, in the step four is this equation I told you just now. And the equations for the reaction which the solid C produce in the step six is this one. Means uh, this, this one and uh, sodium hydroxide, they are impurities. Okay, this is the one that form the solid C. So this one bring to the next step here, next equation. And uh, it will react with the this uh, iodine. So the alkaline iodine solution to form the solid C. Okay, let's see the uh, the values here, table 1.1. The mass of the powder tablets added to the uh, pear shape flask in step 2, 0 0.409 gram. Mass of the dry solid C recorded in the step 9, the last step, 0 0.764 gram. Okay, part 1. Calculate the amount of the solid C collected in the steps, step 9. Okay, so this one is very easy. Molar mass is given. You just use the mass here, 0 0.764 over the molar mass. You should get this. 1.111 times 10 power the dip 3 mole. Okay, after that, use your answer in the part 1 just now to calculate the mass of the aspirin in the powder tablets added to the flask. Okay, so in this part, you need to know uh, the, the mole ratio. Okay, the solid C here is produced from two moles of the, the salt here. And this salt, the mole ratio with the aspirin is 1 to 2. Means the aspirins need to be 2 moles. Because two moles of the salt react with uh, react with this uh, this uh, alkaline uh, iodine solution to produce one mole of the solid C. So therefore, the aspirin need to be two mole. Okay, means uh, in this part the amount of the uh, aspirin is uh, double, uh, so it's uh, two point two 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 times ten power negative three. Okay, so use this mole times the molar mass of aspirin uh, is about 180. Uh, so you should get uh, 0 0.400 gram. So this is the mass of the, the aspirin inside the tablet. Use your answer in part 2 to calculate the percentage by mass of aspirin in the tablets. Okay, again, the mass of the powder tablets is 0 0.409. So use the value 0 0.4 over 0 0.409 times 100%. So we get 97.8%. Okay, last part. Another student allow, follows the same method, but uh, does not allow solid C to dry completely in the step 8. Means uh, there will be uh, still some water there, it's heavier. State and explain the effects that uh, this has on the calculated percentage by mass of aspirin. This is very, very easy. Okay, so first, uh, if the, is, the solid C is not dry completely, so the mass of solid C is larger, and therefore, the moles of the solid C is larger. And there will be larger mole and the mass of aspirin that calculate this later, and the percentage by mass is eventually larger. So this is a relation. So the amount of solid C will be greater than the true value. The calculated percentage by mass of aspirin also will be greater than the previous calculation. Okay, that's all. Thank you.